There's a lot of buzz out there about how do we support longevity and vitality so that we grow older, not sicker. So you may or may not have heard about a supplement called NAD. So we're going to spend some time going through that to understand is NAD something that is optimal for supporting you on your wellness journey. NAD stands for nicotinamide adenine dinucleotide. It's a coenzyme that is essential for every living cell. And at the core, this is something that is utilized by every cell in the body. It's essential not only for the cell's health, but the health of the total being that it's supporting. So NAD is very essential and critical to support overall wellness and optimal health. So NAD is actually essential to energy production in the mitochondria. And you all may remember back from science class, something called ATP, just a form of energy that our bodies generate via the mitochondria, which makes everything operate in the body. So this is very important because the mitochondria are what help to generate energy in the body. When your mitochondria become less healthy, less able to replenish themselves and restore themselves, then that is associated with a more pathologic process of aging. So no healthy mitochondria, you're not going to have optimal energy production in the body, which does not just translate into fatigue or optimal energy, but it's going to actually translate into your body's ability at a cellular level to perform all the activities, functions, and restoration that every cell needs to actually be healthy. So for that reason, NAD is in very important and integral in supporting DNA and cell repair. This is really important because as we're getting older, if we're not supporting these processes, DNA repair and cellular repair, we're actually supporting a pathologic breakdown or aging in the body. So NAD is actually a coenzyme that actually is required for the activity of two groups of proteins called sirtuins and part proteins. The reason that these two classes or groups of proteins are important is they're important for cellular and DNA repair. And without NAD, they can't execute their functions to restore and repair things in the body. The next thing that NAD helps is called redox homeostasis. Big fancy word, all this means is keeping balance in the body from the standpoint of oxidative stress. Oxidative stress is chronic inflammation that's unchecked. So the, the homeostasis is not achieved. It's just oxidative stress building on oxidative stress. And that's a problem because you lose the balance. You need a little bit of oxidative stress to actually support the health of the body. But when it becomes unbalanced, and you've got tons of oxidative stress and not enough clearing of that oxidative stress, then that becomes a problem. And NAD is an essential component that helps meet and check and rebalance and clear oxidative stress. NAD is also one of the things that helps to turn certain genes on and off. It also supports the production of neurotransmitters, which are brain chemicals that support the health of the brain and your neurological system, mental health, etc. NAD is also important because it's supporting resiliency by supporting our response to stress. So we're chronically in a stress state, more likely your NAD levels over time are going to become depleted more quickly. And then the last point that I put here is that NAD is really important for the immune cells, health and signaling and function. Now, NAD is not the only thing that is supporting all of these functions, but it is an important component in helping us to maintain these healthy, restorative and reparative functions in our body. What are some of the benefits of NAD? By maintaining and, and optimizing our NAD levels, we're going to support and improve brain and neurologic health, mental clarity and mental health, focus and concentration, mood, memory, support your immune system's health. So a lot of us have this belief or thought that as you get older, you're supposed to break down and eat. What I would like us to kind of start to think about is getting older while maintaining wellness versus pathological aging. So in general, think about age-related diseases 
they're for the most part going to be linked with low NAD levels and poor mitochondrial health. So some of these include neurodegenerative diseases like Alzheimer's and Parkinson's, autoimmune diseases, chronic immune system disorders, which may be chronic Lyme, chronic Epstein-Barr virus, chronic fatigue syndrome, metabolic diseases are going to be associated with mitochondrial dysfunction and lower NAD levels, which are going to include metabolic syndrome, diabetes, obesity, and then non-alcoholic fatty liver disease. We're also going to see lower NAD levels with kidney disease, atherosclerosis, cancers, pathologic aging, cognitive decline, sarcopenia, which just means muscle wasting or the loss of your muscles, frailty. So you see a lot of people get older and they start to look really like just wasted and they just are not strong and healthy. And then there's some thought that it may also support telomere health. Your telomeres actually have been linked with how long or short they are has been associated with health and your ability to age and live a long, healthy life. NAD is what you're going to usually hear people talking about, NAD+. Plus. So NADH is the reduced form of NAD+. Plus. Why do we care about it? Well, NAD supports glycolysis, which just means when our bodies take glucose from our diet and breaks it down to make energy, supports something called glutaminolysis, which is the breakdown of glutamine, which is an amino acid to help make energy, and then fatty acid oxidation, which is the breakdown of fats to make energy. So NADH is an essential molecule that's needed for all of these processes that our bodies utilize to make energy, to run the cell, to run the body. So in youth and optimal health, NAD levels are going to be plentiful. And one of the reasons is it's constantly being synthesized. It's constantly being catabolized, which just means broken down. And it's constantly being recycled on a cellular level to maintain our health and the healthy NAD levels. So You've got this beautiful balance in youth and great health where, yes, we're making NAD and yes, we're breaking it down, but it's being recycled and replenished on an ongoing basis to keep this, this homeostasis. However, when we start to pathologically age, the balance between NAD synthesis and catabolism, breaking NAD down and recycling it becomes unbalanced. So we are going to have too much catabolism and not enough synthesis and recycling over here. So it becomes unbalanced. So overall, that in short leads to our bodies and cells becoming deficient in having enough NAD to actually handle the functions on a mitochondrial level for repair and the other things that we're speaking about today. So we're going to talk about something called sirtuins. It's a group of proteins and genes that actually play a large role in metabolic activity, regulating our stress response and impacting the aging process. And so there's seven proteins and seven genes. All of them require NAD. So when sirtuins are activated by fasting caloric restriction, which are forms of stress, they're good forms of stress if they're done correctly and in the right intervals of time. When we see these two forms of stress, NAD levels rise in response to that. So that lets us know there's some sort of stressor that's causing the sirtuins as they're becoming more and more activated by fasting and stressing to need more NAD. The other interesting point is that the sirtuin activity is synced to our circadian rhythm or circadian clock. So getting optimal sleep is really important. And if you think about that intuitively, it makes sense because at night we are meant to sleep and that's when detoxification happens. That's where cellular repair happens. That's where something called autophagy, which is cellular cleanup, starts to begin. So these are really important processes that we want to be making sure we're working with the natural rhythm and flow of our systems. Okay, so now let's talk a little bit about PARPs. PARPs are proteins, in particular PARP1 and PARP2 are really integral in DNA repair. And if we don't have the support for these PARP proteins, it supports pathologic aging. And one of the things that we can do to support these proteins 
is actually to make sure that the NAD levels are optimal. So PARP1 is a protein and it's responsible for 90% of DNA repair. And then PARP2 plays a 10% role in the DNA reparative process. And again, they both require a lot of NAD. The reason I put this graphic here is I just want you to know when there's a DNA break or damage to our DNA, our genetic coding that tells our bodies what to do, when this happens, the PARP1 most often is going to be activated. This protein or is usually activated in response to some sort of damage. Where does this damage for DNA come from? It could be a toxin. It could be chemicals that are in your food. It could be environmental pollutants infections, and the PARP1 protein is usually going to be one of the proteins that's activated to support repairing this DNA. So if we have a persistent need for the PARP1 and PARP2, we have seen that the NAD levels decline. And that's one of the ways our NAD levels can become low. And if they become too low and they're not replenished, this whole process is not supported, and therefore we get a lot of pathologic aging. So let's talk a little bit about immune dysregulation and NAD. Chronic inflammation is a hallmark of pathologic aging. Almost every disease you're going to see is people are getting older and they're actually breaking down and aging. So it's imperative that we actually address the chronic inflammation and support the different systems that are helping with this process. And most notably, is that we see there's a lot of communication between our more immune cells and our metabolic cells. We see this a lot with the liver and the adipose tissue, so the fat tissue in the liver. There's a lot of communication between those two types of cells. And so when we have this chronic ongoing inflammation, this supports the dysfunction at the level of both the immune cells and the metabolic cells. This often you're going to see show up over time if this chronic inflammation is not addressed as autoimmune diseases and metabolic disorders. Chronic inflammation leads to rust, which is oxidative stress, which leads to breakdown in the body, which can show up as pathologic aging, sickness and disease, and actual death. So with this, what we see specifically is an increase in the PARP1 proteins, meaning that the they help, remember I said, with the DNA repair, but they also help to keep balance, homeostasis to, to keep balance in the body and to support metabolic flexibility, so blood sugar, insulin signaling, et cetera. And then these, uh, CD838 plays a role in your immune and inflammatory response. So we see the PARP1 and the CD38 levels go up in response to this pathologic aging with chronic inflammation. Both of these types of cells, the PARP1 and the C38, utilize a lot of NAD. So again, we're seeing how NAD is going to really play a role in supporting immune system um, health and mitochondrial health, which is ultimately going to translate into growing older while well. We also know that the pathologic aging with the immune system is occurring on a cellular level, the metabolism is disturbed, and there's mitochondrial dysfunction as well. What I really want you to leave with is that NED is one of the supportive nutrients and therapeutic options we have to support the function and repair at the level of the DNA, our cells, and our mitochondria, because all three of those types of our biology are supported when we have more and more NED. So NED in action, there are more than 300 reactions that require NAD. So you can see that really has a domino effect. If you really stop addressing and replenishing NAD, that really has a lot a significant consequence on your the total body's health. These reactions in general are going to help to maintain homeostasis, so again, balance, as well as support maintaining health as we get older. When we see those NAD levels decline, so we want to get those NAD levels up to support longevity and vitality. So what are some of the indications for NAD? Well, brain health is a big one. So the brain is a tissue which is very rich in mitochondria, so it's very important to optimize NAD levels if you want optimal brain health, cognitive function, and brain clarity. Very supportive for these neurogenitive diseases. We also want to be thinking about it for energy. 
So energy on a cellular level so that things work better and more effectively and efficiently, but also that we feel energized throughout our days. NAD will also support mood, anxiety. It also has been shown to play a role in skeletal muscle development, regeneration, and health. So this is really important in aging because we see as people get older, a lot of people lose a lot of muscle. And muscle is one of your most protective glands that actually helps support healthy aging because it's a very metabolically active tissue. It also supports mobility, balance, et cetera. So important to maintain our muscles as well. NAD has been found to support metabolism. So both how the rate at which our bodies are able to metabolize our food, but also insulin and blood sugar regulation is an important one that the NAD is supportive of. And as a result, it may play a role in helping to address metabolic syndrome, diabetes, cardiovascular disease, and non-alcoholic fatty liver disease. It's also one that is used in addiction therapy. So people who have struggled with addictions, whether it's alcohol, drugs, et cetera, doing NAD has been a component of, of that therapy for some folks. It's also supportive of autoimmune diseases and chronic disease therapies. So this would be for someone who has any autoimmune disease or something like chronic Lyme disease, chronic Epstein-Barr, chronic fatigue. So that's an indication for utilizing NAD. And then just in general, some people will do it just to support slowing down that pathologic aging process. So how do we test for NAD? So there is an intracellular NAD test that's available. There's also an NADH test, and we determine the actual NAD levels from that. And then functional medicine doctors or providers may also just be utilizing other tests along with history and infer that there's probably a need for NAD. Some of the tests that they might do is an oat test, which is an organic acid test, which looks at mitochondrial markers. There's also some oxidative stress markers that are on there. Sometimes doctors will actually look at either an oxidative stress panel or markers that will tell us about lipid peroxides, F2 isoprostanes, your hemoglobin A1C, something called 8-OH deoxyguanosine, oxidized LDL, ages, and then three nitrotyrosine. So these are several markers that can be looked at either independently on a panel. Another way that your doctor may assess this is by looking at an antioxidant or micronutrient panel. So if there's a high need on those panels to increase your antioxidants or micronutrients, that could be an indication that lets us know NAD is important, along with adding lots of antioxidants, both from your diet and in supplemental form. CoQ10 levels can be a sign of a need for NAD, looking as a surrogate marker of mitochondrial health. And then GGT is in particular, it's a liver marker that can let us know if there's some metabolic uh, disturbance or a high toxic load that your body is dealing with that could be a sign, again, of oxidative stress. So functional medicine providers can get very creative and be able to figure out from a lot of the testing that they're doing if there is a strong need to, to add NAD to your regimen. So if you're coming in with signs and symptoms of mitochondrial dysfunction, autoimmune diseases, chronic immune disorders, chronic inflammation, if you have a neurodegenerative disease like Alzheimer's or Huntington's or Parkinson's, that could be a sign that NAD is needed. Chronic fatigue, for sure, is an indication that there's likely a need for NAD, and any mental health diseases also could be a sign of a need for NAD. So let's talk a little bit about starting with interventions and how do we utilize lifestyle factors to actually support optimizing NAD levels. So nutrition and diet is always going to be at the cornerstone of everything a functional medicine doctor speaks about. Um, so you might consider working with both a functional medicine provider as well as nutritionist. Some of the things that, that have been associated with supporting um, NAD levels are going to be caloric restriction, fasting. This really needs to be, if you're not someone who's already well-versed in doing that, that is something to think about working with a provider to make sure that you're set up for it and it's not going to actually make you feel worse before better. 
time restricted eating um, is something that has been really supportive of mitochondrial health in general. And then in general, addressing insulin resistance and metabolic inflexibility with your provider will be really helpful. Metabolic inflexibility would be not just if you have uncontrolled high blood sugar, but it could also be that patient who's very hypoglycemic and they can't go long periods of time without eating. That's also a sign of metabolic inflexibility. So both a functional medicine provider and nutritionist will be really helpful in helping you to support and get this foundation going. The one that I didn't put in here that I would also add is addressing stress. Because stress, I've said this many times, is responsible for 99% of any disease or disorder that shows up. And so the more that you get on top of stress with meditation, connecting to your higher power, being in nature, anything that's restorative to you, that is going to be essential in, in supporting um, NAD levels and mitochondrial health. Uh, next would be to think about exercise. So again, working with your provider so you pick the ideal forms of exercise for you. But the bottom line is that increasing cardiovascular fitness and lean body mass, you're one, going to lower stress, which I just mentioned, but you're going to support cardiometabolic health, which is both the health of the heart, but also the metabolic health, which would be insulin and blood sugar regulation in part. There are others in that. And then also supporting optimal sleep, which is when all that healing process is meant to happen. The other thing is that as you increase exercise, you will likely increase the number of mitochondria, the size, and the fitness of them. And this is called mitochondrial biogenesis. So doing the right forms, it does not necessarily mean that you need to be running a marathon because that's not necessarily going to be the most supportive thing for everybody to support mitochondrial health. The next thing, think about working with that circadian rhythm that I mentioned. Remember I said that some of those reparative genes called the sirtuins have been linked to being increasing um, and synced with the circadian rhythm. And the reparative processes in general in the body, the bulk of them are meant to happen at night when your body is in a resting, restorative state. So the more that you make sure you're getting optimal sleep and you're getting quality of sleep, meaning you're staying asleep and then optimally getting into all the levels or stages of sleep, that is going to be very important to make sure you're actually getting into a restorative state. The other thing is the timing of sleep. So I always tell all of my clients, and I think Einstein might have said this, that every hour of sleep you get before midnight is worth two afterwards. So, and that again is working with their circadian rhythm. So when it's getting darker, there's programming and signaling to our hypothalamus that is telling us, okay, it's time to start to be getting into reparative, restorative state. And so when you resist that and you fight that by constantly staying up later and not getting enough sleep, that is actually working against the biology that is supportive of you. All right. I wanted you to know some of the forms of, of that the people will utilize to get their NAD levels up. So this first one is a precursor to NAD called nicotinamide riboside. A lot of people refer to this as NR. This is available as an oral supplement. NR then goes to NMN, which is nicotinamide mononucleotide. So this, again, is a precursor to NAD. So both of these ultimately should translate into increasing your NAD levels. And then NAD itself is available in IV or intramuscular form. And that is the way to get your NAD levels up directly. So those are the supplemental forms in ways in which we can actually get your NAD up as well. So as I mentioned, you can get NAD itself through IV or intramuscularly, which is IM. Generally speaking, if you do NAD by IVs, this needs to be done in the office of a functional medicine provider. Oftentimes, they're going to need to observe you and change the rate at which the IV is running. Typically, the first IV, NAD IV, I'm going to dose it somewhere around 250 to 500 milligrams, and it's going to be put in a bag of IV fluids, which could be normal saline, and that will run into your vein over three to four hours. We have to adjust the rate at which that flows in 
what based on whether you actually start to get a little bit nauseous or have a little bit of abdominal cramping, some muscle aches or head flushing. And these are not bad signs. It just lets us know that you're actually receiving it, but we need to turn it down a little bit because we don't want you to be uncomfortable doing that. And so, again, an important reason to be in, a, in an office with a provider doing it. The other thing that I have also found is that people who really need NAD, they'll start to feel a, a difference earlier a lot of times. So healthy clients, when they do it and they're just doing it preventatively, it usually takes several IVs before they notice any shift. And I can see in my clients who have something like an autoimmune disease or some sort of mitochondrial dysfunction, they feel it much earlier, maybe after the second or third IV. Everybody's different, but I do find the more you need it, you will have to go a little bit slower in, in, in taking the IV in and getting the dose up. But I also find that you will actually start to notice some shift a little bit earlier. Then what I would say in general is more healthy folks, I'll have them do weekly IVs sometimes twice a week if they really want to, for a total of three grams is generally okay in a healthier person, meaning there's no signs of autoimmune disease, mitochondrial dysfunction, immune system issues, cardiometabolic issues, et cetera. So that whole list that I went through, that's not an issue and we're doing this just preventatively. Usually three grams over several weeks will be sufficient for that person. The more that a person has any of the issues that we went through, the more likely they're going to need six grams. And that, again, will be weekly. Typically, for some people, they will do it twice a week. And then once that three or six grams, whatever you decide to, to, to go with, then I recommend once you've gotten that big loading dose in, that every three to four months you think about doing another gram. And again, the more unwell a person is, you might have to do that more frequently, or you might have to do, you know, one to two grams, one to three grams every three months. We would just have to individualize it. But that's in short how I generally do NAD IVs with my clients. Now, I am or intramuscular NAD. Not as many providers do this because of that cramping sensation or the nausea or any of those infusion effects that you can get when you do it intramuscularly we have no control over that so generally i'm only going to do i am nad in a person who's healthy and really we already know they've had an iv and they've tolerated it providers may start with a lower dose if they're going to do intramuscular nad at about 50 milligrams and that would be weekly and they can slowly increase as it's tolerated by clients now nicotinamide ribose or nr that's an oral supplement some providers will go with this. Generally, a starting dose as a standalone supplement for NR is going to be about 100 to 300 milligrams a day. Some providers may eventually go up to 600 to 1,000 milligrams based on their mitochondrial picture by history and potentially by labs, but also their ability to tolerate that large of a dose because there are other factors that would go into that. Nicotinamide mononucleotide, NMN, also an oral supplement and precursor to NAD. It's available in liposomal forms, and this can be taken a little bit lower doses. Liposomal is a delivery system that supports better absorption of a supplement. So typically, it's going to be a liquid form most often, and it, a lot of times it's going to be sublingual and absorbed through the mucosal tissue and in, in your oral tissue in your mouth. You can also just do, do it orally as a capsule, and the starting dose typically is going to be anywhere from 50 to, to 300 milligrams a day. Oftentimes, this is also one that's going to be in a combination product with other mitochondrial nutrients, so you might see that as well. So another thing that I wanted to make sure that I mentioned was sometimes what we want to do as functional medicine providers is to check back on some of those functional markers. So for instance, your functional medicine provider may want to reevaluate and reexamine a new oxidative stress panel, a new cardiac risk profile, which has some of those oxidative markers on it. May want to look at your hemoglobin A1C and see over time as you've done some mitochondrial work and gotten your NAD levels up. We may also look at something like your GGT again, an oat test, that's organic acid test 
that is going to be looking at a lot of mitochondrial markers along with a lot of other things. And so a lot of times your functional medicine provider and nutritionist may want to go back and look at those again to see what's shifted and, and do we need to address our dosing of NAD? Do we need to add some other mitochondrial nutrients and support? Do we need to go back and work on gut health as a result? So that's one option. Sometimes functional medicine doctors are really just going to look at how are the disease or the disorder states that you're dealing with, are those shifting enough? And that can help to guide the frequency that you would need NAD, NR, or NMN, whether it's just something that's going to be at a maintenance dose or whether it's at a point where you need to increase your dose or, like I said, add other nutrients or address other imbalances in the body like gut health or stress. So these are some things that you may hear your functional medicine doctor and nutritionists wanting to go ahead and address at the end of any NAD supportive treatment. So I hope that this was helpful and that you found this informative, and I hope to see you soon. Be well. Welcome to Root the Health, the best place to order, manage, and track results from over 30 different lab companies in one single place for free. It's going to take you under two minutes to sign up, and you can order any functional medicine lab for your client in under 30 seconds. Let me show you how it's done. So here's our beautiful interface. I'm typing in the name of my client, selecting the lab that I want to order for them and hitting send. From there, Rupa and their amazing team handle the rest. They email the client, collect payment, and even offer an interest-free three-month payment plan. We've also built the world's largest library of information about chronic health conditions, the lab tests that can help you find the root cause, and the evidence-based interventions that you can use to help people heal from them. It's called the Ruba Health Magazine. There, we have in-depth articles about almost any health condition you can imagine. And we give you step-by-step protocols that other clinicians have used to help their clients heal and that are verified by evidence-based sources. You should totally check it out and it'll transform your practice. And we can't wait to see you. So make sure you sign up today at rupahealth.com.